Hallelujah. Faithful Father, I call you faithful. Let's open Luke chapter 8. You are so faithful to me. I call you faithful Father. Faithful Father. Faithful Father. So faithful to me. I call you healer Father. I call you healer. I call you healer. You are so healer. I call you healer Father. I call you healer. Look at the eight. You are the healer. Luke chapter 8 verse 22 Luke 8 verse 22 um, Let's read together 1, 2, 3, go One of those days He and his disciples Got into a boat And he said to them Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out to sea. But as they were sailing, he fell off to sleep. And a whirlwind revolving from below upward swept down on the lake. And the boat was filling with water, and they were in great danger. And the disciples came and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he, being thoroughly awakened, censored and blamed and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there came a calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? You, your trust, your confidence in me, in my veracity and my integrity. And they were seized with alarm and profound and reverent dread. And they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the wind and the sea and they obey him then they came to the country of Gerasens which is opposite Galilee okay let's just use again the KJV just to read the first two verses let's use the KJV to read the first two verses Verse 22. Let's read 1, 2, 3, go from the KJV. Uh, 1, 2, 3, go. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Just look at your neighbor and say, are you ready for the word? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready for the word? Make sure your neighbor is talking to you. If they are not, make sure you tell them to tell you, to ask you, and ask them as well at the same time. Come and talk to your neighbor and say, are you ready for the word? Talk to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can see some sad faces from here. Just look at your neighbor and say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whenever God wants to do something, don't be foolish not to know that it becomes a season of open doors. The way I consider the call of Isaiah, I don't think it, he was a spectacular person. I don't think, but 
Isaiah was privileged in this way that he managed to hear what God wanted to do. Who shall go for us? I want you to understand this. Whenever God wants to do something, that's why he says, if you don't do it, even these stones, they will rise up and do things. In other words, what he was saying was, if I want to do something, if there is no one to do it, stones will grow legs and hands. I have seen God using foolish things to accomplish what he wants. Whenever God wants to do something, he doesn't look for the rich. He looks for the people who are available. Are you available? When you want to water your garden, if you use the horse pipe, the horse pipe it's impossible for water to reach your garden before filling the horse pipe so the horse pipe can actually think that hey i'm clever look i have a lot of water and yet it's just a means of transportation whenever god wants to reach someone if you happen to be available, people will think that you are spectacular. That's why you look at the disciples. People began to worship them. They said, no guys, don't worship us. We are men of like passion. Whenever you avail yourself, your brothers and sisters will think you are different. They'll think there's something about you that's different. The Bible says, because the guys had only availed themselves. Now, whenever you look, whenever you look at Peter, don't be mistaken. Those guys, according to history, they were unlearned. They were unschooled. You know, Peter, I, I always caught this. He was unlearned to an extent that he found it difficult to read Paul's letters. So some, of the, some of the things that this guy talks about, that he writes, they are hard to understand. But even though they were unlearned, They said yes to the call of God. Now the passage that we just read is a passage when Jesus spoke to his disciples. He said to them, he said, guys, let us cross over to the other side. He got with his team in the boat and he said, guys, let us cross over. Now there is nothing as powerful as hearing the master saying, let us cross over. The sons of Sceva did not hear the command of the master and they continued in their own understanding that's why they had all those challenges in the ministry they had exactly the opposite of the sons of Issachar who 
which the Bible says they understood the times and in this instant I want you to understand this it was not the disciples who say to Jesus may we cross over but it was Jesus who said to his disciples let us cross over it's important in life in everything you do to know who started what you are doing that's why it is always right for you to avoid starting your own thing but rather you should join him in his thing in the beginning I thought and it's a correction that I need I, I, I feel needs to be given to a lot of people in the beginning I thought I had a vision called revival fire ministries but then later on by growing and getting understanding I began to understand that no I don't have a vision but I am a steward of his vision in life you have to avoid to call God in what you are doing that's a mistake that a lot of people make to say Lord we are inviting you to come and join us in what we are doing are you hearing what I'm saying I said are you hearing what I'm saying to say Lord come and somebody said to me the other time pastor tell me why is it that it's so easy for people to divorce these days it's so easy for somebody just to walk out of a relationship because of a minor thing we may blame it all we want on demons we may blame it all we want on the devil people may be speaking in tongues godly and all that but the golden question is who started it who started it a lot of businesses they don't go far it's somebody who was just walking and thought ah I need to do this and then they started and okay as they were going Lord please bless what I'm doing bless what I have started come and join me and yet it's supposed to be the other way around the question must not be Lord can you come and join me but the question must be Lord what are you doing that I may join you do you know that God has finished this business already yeah. you were born in a finished business yeah. you have to understand what is happening in this business yes. okay it's like praying for somebody you don't I've had a lot of people who say I have received a new revelation on how to pray for somebody do you know that do you know that there is the Bible says there is nothing new under the Sun there is nothing look at your neighbor and say there is nothing new under the Sun <laughs> I am convinced that it is impossible to come up with a new idea on earth just a new your own new idea why because every idea is birthed out of an idea that already exists 
Okay, can you tell me one thing that you discovered on your own? One thing that had never been discovered that you discovered? It may just be a fact that you are the one who found it. And you are the first one to be recorded to have found it. There is nothing new under the sun. Look at fashion. It's a cycle. What is, was. The next step, if you look at everything, the next step, if you look at cars, they are now going back into the days of old. It's just a cycle. Look at ladies' shoes. What is in fashion today was in fashion in, 15, in, 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 in 1956. It's just that these days maybe they call it high heel, but it was there. Or maybe just that in those days men used to wear it also. But it's, it's the same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will never come to God with a new idea. I, I want you to listen to this and hear this very well. A lot of people think that they, God gets surprised when they do things to say, Wow, did you see what happened on earth? This guy thought of a brilliant thing. The Bible says, as the east is from the west, so are our minds, when they are carnal, away from God's mind. The Bible says, the foolishness of God is wiser. <laughs> Listen, the person who thinks the most in this world, when God looks at it, is foolishness. It is impossible to come to God with your vision and present it to Him. That's why the Bible says, our own righteousness is like filthy rags. When you come to God in your suit, it's like you're putting on rags. Your best is his worst. Your highest level is his least. When you have finished, he will be starting. So calling him in what you are doing is foolish. These days my daughter has got a tendency. Sometimes when I'm really busy doing something, working on something very important, she says, Daddy, come. Come. And when I come, she says, sit. And sometimes, okay, I sit. She says, okay. She takes whatever a doll, she puts it on my back. She tries to tie it on my back. If I try to go, she says, no, Daddy, sit. That's exactly the picture that I have of a lot of people who are calling God in their business. To her, it's not a joke. We are serious here. Daddy, carry my baby. <laughs> to hear that serious business. And as believers, sometimes when we think that this is our best, we forget that it is his worst. So in this season, I pray that as we are in this season, we have got to understand that if he is doing something, that is what we need to join. That's why the disciples, when Jesus came to them, they left what they were doing. Yeah. He said, guys, come. <laughs> and I will make you. In other words, you were saying, I will make you what you are right now is not it. I will make you. Somebody may say, Pastor, how do you join God in what he's doing? You've got to be able to discern what you want to do if it is his will. A lot of people think that, say for example, I've had a lot of people ask me that question. If they want to do a program in school, they come and say, I want to do a program in school. But I want to know, does God want me to do mathematics or 
geography that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is whenever you are taking a certain course is it in line what is making you choose that line is it how he wired you is it what he made you to do is it in line with his principles the way i picture it it's like god wants to build a house and he will not tell you whether to become a plumber a builder a tiler a painter but what you have to do is you have to come and look at his master plan and see what he wants to do and find where you fit into what he is doing not to draw your own plan and call him to come into your own plan now in this case the bible says the disciples heard what he said he said to them guys let us cross over whenever you hear him talking about doing something don't be the last to join in are you hearing what i'm saying Amen. he said let us cross over look at your neighbor and say let us cross over yes. if god says now this is this is this is profound pastor so how do i hear him because that's something else somebody will live here trying to really how do i hear him the easiest way of hearing god is through what he wrote he wrote his mind the bible says the bible that you're holding in your hand it was written by men who were inspired by god he had a plan that he wanted to show his people that they may join into his plan so he wrote the plan down the easiest way of knowing what he wants to do is to get into his word when you open the bible you've got to understand that you are reading the master plan of god if you can find somewhere to squeeze in to what he's doing you are gone if there are people that i'm not so much afraid of or i'm not so much moved with it's people who are doing things because they are wise they can do things okay fine um, there are people who do things because maybe they have gone to school they have done this they have done that okay but people that i have seen to be scary are those people who do things because they had an inspiration from the word of god they may not be as educated as you think they should be again something else that you are taught never to talk about other ministers and yet i'm going to talk about one and use his name again simple example that i'll give some of you who may know him a man like ezekiel good whenever you think of people who are schooled and you talk of such a man though he now is called a doctor whenever you think of people who are wise whenever you think of people who are brilliant if you think of him there will be something wrong with you but when you look closely it's a man who just got an idea of what god wanted to do got hold of it in a season where they were wiser people in a season where they were richer people it's not about money every day i laugh it's not about money it's not about money a lot of people look at what people have it's not about money it's about what the person got hold of the likes i'm talking of peter the man got a revelation with his unschooled being he got a revelation he managed to read the master plan of god yes it's not about 
whether you have gone to Australia, to Canada, to no, it's not about that. There are a lot of people who are dying. If only I can go to America, my life will change. It's not about going to America. It's about squeezing into the plan of God. What is he saying in his word? He said, guys, let us cross over to the other side. As long as you are pursuing what God wants, it's not in your power. It's not in your own energy. He uses foolish things. He uses weak things. Are you weak? Then you might be the material that he wants to use. Somebody say, let us cross over to the other side. Come on, you can say it better than that. Let us cross over to the other side. Now, I want you to talk to your neighbor and say, let us cross over to the other side. Jesus spoke to his disciples. He says, guys, let us cross over. And can I speak to you guys in this season, this season called fire conference, let us cross over to the other side. We cannot continue staying on this side for too long because Jesus said, let us cross over. Come on, somebody open your mouth and say, let us cross over to the other side. Are you ready to cross over? He said, let us cross over. I told you there is nothing as exciting as crossing over at his word. If it was our own word, it was going to be something else. We were supposed to fight and defend it. But this time, it is Jesus who said, let us cross over. Now listen, one thing that I like is that he did not say, I am crossing over. No. He did not say, guys, you cross over. Uh-uh. He said, let. Whatever you want to do, before you do it, get into the word of God and discover where it is written. If he says it must be done, then you must know he is saying, let us. Are you looking for a miracle? Get into the word of God. If that miracle is written somewhere, then you should know that he is saying, let us cross over. Problem comes if it is not written in the Bible. But if it is somewhere in John. And the Bible says they began to cross over. Look, let us know that as they were about to cross over, Jesus went to sleep he fell asleep have you ever had a promise from God a big promise from God and you told everybody about what is gonna happen to you because you believed it you declared it you spoke it you meditated on it and immediately when you are about to take off in the direction that you feel God is leading you, it feels like you are all alone. Have you ever believed that God is now about to elevate me? And when you are about to begin to be elevated, it feels like he has left you. been in a season where you so much need God and each time you get into your prayer closet it feels like he is nowhere to be found have you ever believed
believe God for a bigger opportunity and the minute you believe God for it all doors seem to have closed the Bible says as they began to take off Jesus went to sleep I believe there's somebody sitting in here who is in the season of a sleeping Jesus the time that you feel like now I need I've had several people who come to me and say pastor I need that power that I had in the first days I need to feel that thing every time I woke up and I'm going to church I felt there was a rush I, I, I went to church running but that thing is gone it's gone it's gone it's a season of a sleeping Jesus Bible says as he was sleeping there was a wind that came there was a storm such that the boat began to be tossed to and fro and the Bible says as the wind began and continued to blow water began to get into the boat this number one there is a wind there is a storm water is now getting into the boat but in that same instance Jesus is sleeping there was a day morning and I began to think to myself that is this thing really going to be successful? Have you ever had a storm? You're trying to look at where you are growing, where you are going. You can't see anything. The storm is too strong. And you're looking for Jesus. He is asleep. I want you to understand this in this season I want you to believe it under whatever circumstance that I'm crossing over I don't know if you're hearing what I'm talking about refuse to look at the storm I wish I can get somebody who can hear what I'm talking about in this place refuse to look on the storm because if you look on the storm you will turn the boat backwards and begin to go where you are coming from keep holding on to the word of his promise that he said we are crossing over to the other side it's very easy to look at the storm very easy to kill your vision because there is no money let me come again when Jesus spoke about crossing over he did not talk about money he said let us is anybody hearing what I'm talking about propose that Jesus knew that there was going to be a storm because he knows all in all in life I believe if we can get this attitude we will be unstoppable an attitude that says he knew I will be here a lot of people the minute they get arrested and they are in a jail cell they feel like the boat must turn we must go back 
Look at the children of Israel. The Bible says, as they were walking in the wilderness, because of hunger, they said, Moses, take us back. An attitude that I have gotten hold of is an attitude that says, I can't go back anymore. If I die, I'll die walking forward. I, I want you to listen to this. It's not just a message. I believe this is my heart. It's now impossible to turn the boat. It's now impossible to stop. Let me give this message to somebody who is sitting in here. Do you know that your quitting is going to affect your children and children's children? You've got to have an attitude that says forward ever. That's why Paul, when you look at his attitude, there was nothing that could stop that man. is about to sink and yet Jesus was preaching in his sleep <laughs> come on talk to me do you think that he was sleeping so much such that he could not hear that there is a storm I strongly believe that he was actually enjoying being tossed was enjoying a storm that threatened their lives. Storm or no storm, he said, let us do not tread his words for the storm. Can I repeat myself? It's only a problem if you did not hear what he said. Because when you read the Bible, he stood with us on the other side of the sea. And he said, guys, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always. Always means even in the storm. I wish I can talk to somebody who is about to quit because the few the fees are too much it's not about the fees did he say you must cross over I want you to watch this when God wanted another domain called earth there was nothing and the fact that there was nothing did not stop him from today I want you to understand this we are crossing over people can't hear this but for those who are hearing what I'm talking about we are crossing over I want you to tell three people around you we are crossing over that you are crossing over expect a doctor's report that is disturbing 
Each time you hear about crossing over, expect to be called by your boss talking about firing somebody called you. Each time you hear about crossing over, expect to hear bad news about your weakness. Each time you hear about crossing over, expect to hear things that will tell you that it's impossible for you to get where you want to get. Remember Nehemiah, when Nehemiah was about to build, they came to him with bad news. They came to him telling him about how weak the walls were, about how impossible it was for them to build. But because Nehemiah had something in his heart, I want you to get ready to cross over. I don't know where you are at. I don't know what it is that you want to cross over in. But I want you to hold on to the word of God and say, I'm crossing over. With or without support, I'm crossing over. With or without money, I'm crossing over. With or without this education, I'm crossing over. Why? Because he said, let us cross over. Come on, somebody say, I'm crossing over. I know church people are taught that you just say it. I'm crossing over just to impress the men standing in front. You may waste your time. I want you to declare in your life that in this thing I'm crossing over. In this area I'm crossing over. On this subject I'm crossing over. Come on somebody shout I'm crossing over. Let us cross over to the other side. I want you to make an announcement to people around you that if you won't find me here I'll be on the other side if you can manage to make that statement boldly in the face of demons for sure we will find you on the other side Somebody has got to declare this in the face of demons that hey I've been on this place too long I'm now crossing over you've got to phone people and tell them if you fail to get me there I won't be there anymore because I'm crossing over there are challenges that keep on staying in our lives for too long you cannot have the same challenge for 10 years you have got to outgrow those challenges you have got to come out of those problems you cannot go through six years of struggling to pay your rent you have got to cross over to the other side you cannot continue fighting the same demons year in year out you have got to cross over you cannot continue talking about the same thing year in year out high five your neighbor and say if you can't find me here I'll be on another side because I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. I'm ready to say bye bye to this season. I have stayed in this season for too long. I'm now going into the next season. It cannot be winter all year. I need to get into the next season. It cannot be summer all year. I need to get into another season. The Bible says morning may endure for a night. It cannot be night all day. It cannot be night the whole year. The sun is going to come out. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. I cannot beg all year. I'm crossing. Come on, somebody say, I'm crossing over. There is a season. Ah, listen, can I? I don't know how not to preach to talk to you. There is a season in your life that you have to say bye bye to. You know the season. If you won't say bye bye to it, it's staying for good. There is a season. There is a part in your life that has got to go. There is an era that has got to go. There is a time that you are in that has got to go. There is something that has to move away. 
you've got to be ready to say bye bye I'm crossing over I'm crossing over today I want you to make a declaration to certain devils in your life and say you and you and you oh, we have stayed together for long enough I'm now crossing over I'm now changing my address I'm now changing my area I'm now changing my location I cannot be here all year long yesterday I was here I cannot continue being here I've got to move on to the next level come on talk to somebody and say let us cross over let us cross over let us cross over let us cross over listen listen if somebody comes into your life today what is it that was not there last year that they will find being stagnant is not of God and let me repeat myself if somebody is to come into this church in five months from now and find us still where we are at even water they say stagnant water is dangerous ready to move to the next level you don't have money yes but I'm moving to the next level I cannot fight the same devil year in year out <laughs> I send somebody moving out of a season I'm crossing over storm or no storm I am crossing over I have cried enough I'm crossing over I'm praying for women who will go to their husbands and say hey daddy let us cross over to the other side It's a new season. It's a new era. Even your enemies must notice that there is something that happened in your life. Why? Because we are crossing over. There's got to be a cleanup campaign in your life. Certain things have got to remain behind as you cross over. The Bible says faith. Faith. The substance of things hoped for. It's high time you grab the next season. Get hold of the future. Draw it closer. Let's cross over to the next side. Let's cross over to the other side. I just want you to sing wherever you are. Yes, I, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I, yes, I believe. Do you believe? Oh, all oh, things are possible. Hallelujah, if you are. I want you to grab, just grab the hands of somebody next to you as we sing this song. Yeah, yes, yes, I believe. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I believe. Do you believe? possible if you want oh. I just want you to
close your eyes wherever you are. Just close your eyes. Over, let us cross over. Oh, King, a possible if you hope. Somebody has got to stretch out and say, Lord, I'm coming. Let us cross over together. A possible if you hope. Do you believe all things are possible if you will? Do you believe all things, all things, all things if you will? Only, only believe. Moses spoke to the children of Israel and said, Guys, the Lord spoke to me that we should come out of Egypt. Despite how difficult Pharaoh is, we are coming out. Despite the challenges of Egypt, we are coming out. Despite what we have or what we don't have, we are coming out. If you believe, we are coming out. Only believe. Do you believe all things? They are possible. If you only, only believe. I want you to be still. Don't think about money. Don't think about your health. Don't think about what you have. Don't think about what you don't have. Don't think about the support that you need. Don't think about your education. Be still like a baby. Being went, be still. Rest on God. Put your trust in Him. The battle is not yours. It was never yours. The Lord is saying, let me worry about what you need. Move to the next level. Move to the next level. Don't tell him how difficult it is. Be still. Rest in God. Let God be your confidence. Let God be your anchor. Rest on his ability. Hold on to him. Fly on his terms. That mountain is melting. That challenge is moving aside. I sense God speaking to somebody. You are about to give in. The Lord is saying, start. My hand is upon you. You have stayed in this land too long. You have cried over it too long. Pack your belongings. Go to the next level. You have what it takes. Hold on to my hand. Let us cross over to the other side.
let us go 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 yes let us go yes hold my hand let us go to the next level let us go 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 to the next level let us go to the next level let us go to the next season let us go to the next season you have heard a lot of prophecies it's time to go you have a law called shima moratobo higher you have heard a lot of messages it's time to go 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 to the next level let's go to the other side Yes, let's go to the next side. Yes, let's go to the other side. It's melting. It's melting. It's vanishing. Let us go to the other side. Forget the storm. Forget the storm. Forget the wind. Let's go to the other side. Mashara katala barata bayanda rilera babo shatari haya. Let us go to the other side. Let us go to the other side. I pray that God may open your eyes so that you may see what is waiting for you on the other side. Believe God and do not doubt His word. Believe God, do not doubt His word. If you only, only believe. Just continue closing your eyes. Don't sing. I want you to focus on God. Fo Speak to you. Join him in what he's doing. Oh, only asking God questions why am I here where am I going what is going to be of me the Lord is saying I had this appointment for you in your darkest hour that's time for you to dream. Believe his word. Mary, you are going to have a child. Never had a husband. It's not about your husband. Mary, understand this. The Spirit will come and rest on you. Mary, you will have a child. Don't listen to what people are saying, Mary. You will have a child. It's nothing emotional. This is His word. You will have a child. You will have sons. No, don't tell me about your age. I'm the one speaking. Abraham, you will have sons. Don't let your flesh speak back to you. You will have sons. As the sand on the sea, 
has the stars in the sky. Joseph, tell these people that you brought to Egypt, tell them that I will visit them. They will come out of Egypt. Don't look at the signs of Pharaoh. Hear my word, you will come out of Egypt. Don't rest on your money. Don't rest on your education. Don't rest on what you have. Don't rest on your support. Rest on his word. You will cross over. His word is final. That's all you need. See yourself where he said you are going. Get in that place. Stay there. Possess that land. Possess. Stay in. Because all things are possible. The Bible says Abraham staggered through unbelief. He believed that he who has promised. He's capable, Abraham. God is capable. God is capable. Jehovah, you are the most high Jehovah. You are the most high Jehovah. You are the most high Jehovah. Jehovah, you are the most I dream.